Hey team, Matcha Models here with a build blog. As you can see, the format is a little bit different, so I'm really curious how everyone receives this. Please let me know down in the comments whether or not you're into this kind of talky style or if you just want to cut back into the hands-on approach and, and see me work. So today we're here to talk about the uh, Cloud Strife figure. Um, as you can probably read from the title, uh, this is the first mini that I've ever painted. Let me caveat that and say I'm somewhat of a experienced builder. So I've done a little bit smaller figures with like some Star Wars cockpit figures and some other cockpit figures, but this is my first time kind of uh, playing in the mini foray. So that's all just to say that I kind of come into this with a background of knowledge. I'm not walking into this completely dry. Overall, I really, really enjoyed the experience. Um, I can completely see how uh, folks are interested in, in building minis and the whole experience in itself. It's self-contained and I learned a ton and I wanna try to encapsulate all that knowledge and present it to y'all here today. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was the tools that I used. One, one of the huge pieces of why this is appealing is that it's all relatively self-contained. As opposed to kind of building with Gundam or anything else where you're sprawling out and you're using a lot of tools, the, the mini and the figure painting repertoire is, is relatively small. So I kept it simple. I used a lot of um, Vallejo paints. I used the Princeton Velvet Touch brushes. I also used my Tamiya Panel Line wash to be able to accomplish my washes. So that's all to say that everything was within arm's reach and didn't really have a giant sprawling footprint like some of my other builds might have. I've got about four lessons learned that I want to be able to share with everybody. And the first one I want to share is um, setting up the base. So one of the big errors that I made was um, I actually uh, pinned the base. And pinning the base isn't the error, but I pinned the base and I left it as is. And uh, when I cut to the B-roll, what you'll see is you'll see that the, um, the pin that came through there was a great idea. It was relatively easy to execute after drilling the hole in Cloud's foot. The However, is I should have super glued it right away. Towards the end of the build, I had the nightmare scenario happen where I was actually holding the figure, and what do you know it, the figure fell, and it was right next to my paint palette. So the sword snapped off, and I actually got a little bit of um, paint on the figure's hair. So I had to clean that up and piece everything together. It was yesterday, and I was just really desperate to get everything done. So my biggest lesson learned is um, taking that base and then making sure uh, you, your figure is absolutely secure to it. You'll You'll see too, I took an old film camera and I used that to kind of spin things around and that worked great as well. Um, I also too want this video, there's an intense amount of figure figure mini stuff out there and I don't want this to uh, replace any of that. I merely hope it's a jumping point for anybody who's in, in my similar boat who's never painted a mini figure before and goes to find some additional resources. The second big lesson that I learned was my prep. Um, so similar to modeling, right? You're gonna take your figure, you're gonna unbox it, you're gonna clean it up. I missed a ton of prep areas and the prep areas that you miss on a mini stand out a heck of a lot more than they do on a model. So I'll give you really good for instance, on the underside of Cloud's arms and his, his swords, I failed to see that there was some um, mold lines or e ejection molds. I'm assuming this is all done via resin or, or uh, a resin 3D printer. And you can see on the underside that there's uh, some pieces that I missed. So that's all to say, you know, of course, just like with anything else, be absolutely sure to take your time. And when you're working at that smaller scale to really go, you know, 360 degrees around the model when you're, um, when you're checking it. I was looking at it mostly from a, from a head on, on you know, dead, dead forward angle. And I think that uh, short sold me and in turn I missed a bunch of points. Along those same lines, I, I should have had the sword glued to the back of his head. I saw that there was an attachment point and of course with the giant buster sword it only attaches to a small part on the handle. So if I had glued the sword to his head that would have been good. So if you find some opportunities go ahead and increase where there's little attachment points and try to increase the overall structural rigidity of your model. It'll pay off dividends in the long run. So my third and probably biggest lesson learned for everybody, aside from number one in securing the base, is Zenithal lighting. For those of y'all who don't know what Zenithal lighting is, I'll go ahead and uh, flash an image right now. But what you would do is you would do a completely black base and then you would come back with um, either white or gray. And what you're trying to recreate is uh, the lighting effect. Um, the upside of it is, especially when you're working with skin tones and, uh, and hair in this instance for me, 
I, with a pure black base, I had to work my butt off to get it covered. So when you're looking at Cloud's arms and his, his face, what you're actually seeing is probably five, seven coats of paint to be able to cover up that black. If I had done the Zenithal lighting ahead of time and also taken a little bit of time to um, go ahead and lighten up the darker areas, I would have saved myself so much heartache. I probably wasted like two hours just trying to cover up the black on the hair and the face. And the reason that I chase after the black, and, and I want you to take this note and just dump it because I, I don't know where I heard it from, is that I, I felt that when you primed in black, if there was unpainted areas, then it would reflect the shadows or it could kind of hang back. And I did notice that on the dark areas where I did use black, I did like the, um, the accents where you would see underneath the model and it would show a little bit of black. But in retrospect, I wish I had done Zenithal lighting or I had primed in gray instead of priming in black. So that is a great lesson learned that I'm going to take forward. All right, my fourth lesson learned. So working with a wet palette, I've done this before, but in limited application. And this is my first time working with a wet palette for an extended amount of time. And for anybody who's never heard of a wet palette, please go uh, check out some other videos and see what it's about. But the way that I do it, and I'm definitely changing my game after this, is I used to take a old kitchen sponge and I would wet it and put it there. And then I would take my parchment paper and lay it over top. Well, what I found was that my parchment paper would quickly curl. So one of my techniques to kind of get it to lay flat was to wet it down really, really heavily. The problem is that I found is that there was a lot of beating when I wet my um, parchment paper down and especially on, on using the sponge and it didn't really necessarily lay flat. And what I largely attributed to is the paper trying to conform around the sponge. And the big lesson learned here is that I probably should just move to like paper towels. It seems like with Miniature Maniac and a lot of the other really big um, prominent mini folks that I, I trust and I respect, they just simply lay down a paper towel or have some kind of other, you know, uh, thinner substrate underneath there to be able to catch water and then to transmit it back up through the parchment paper. So I wish I had done that. Um, admittedly, it wasn't the, the biggest time sink, but I did find with thinner paints like the skin tones and with whites that um, those colors would quickly bleed. A lot of the darker tones held just fine over top of the wet parchment paper, but for some of the more sensitive ones, I found that I was kind of juggling things. The other big lesson learned too with painting um, is working on eyes. So I, uh, I and, and I think this is the bane of all, all miniature figure painters. So number one, just go for it. Don't overthink it too much. But after talking to some folks, I found there was a couple of different techniques. And the one that I'm eager to try next time is holding the model upside down. So I actually went at Strife um, head on. I painted the white first and then I took the blue. And I'm okay with the eyes. I don't think they look fantastic. But even looking at some uh, really, really well painted miniatures, the, you know, the eyes always kind of suffer just a little bit at that scale. So based on my experience, I'm completely fine with it. Um, that being said, I'm curious to try the upside down technique. The other big piece too is um, that I read is to paint the uh, iris first and then to paint the white afterwards. So that's a painting technique that I'm looking forward to employing. In short, get into painting minis. It's super cool. I really enjoyed it. I think with a little bit of practice and taking these couple lessons learned forward, I can probably cut down my miniature painting to maybe two to three to four hours. And for those of us who get really engrossed in you know big 40 hour, 20 hour projects, Breaking off and painting minis is a great pressure valve. I'm also kind of using this as um, like a little gifting thing. In the past, I built a model and gifted to somebody and I'm still gonna continue to do that, but um, I find it a little bit easier to, uh, to paint minis and, and pass them along. Um, I also find it's a really good way to kind of just stretch my arms either during a big build like I'm doing with this Gundam build or in between builds to kind of decompress and to get after it and to try something different. So I hope this video motivated y'all to get after that. And if you're painting minis, keep on uh, uh, kicking butt painting minis. Please let me know if any of these comments or if I have any corrections. And for anybody who's never painted minis before, again, I can't encourage you enough to try to check it out. Thanks again for tuning in. If this is your first time, I really appreciate a subscribe. And uh, even if this is your first time and you're coming back, a like and a comment is fantastic. I do have a Patreon. And if you want to head over there and leave something in the tip jar, that would be rad. As always, I hope whatever you guys are getting after, I hope whatever you guys are doing, you're out there and you're making it macho. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.